Welcome to Trade Indie. I got comments. This gentleman's report is for the 10th of December. Well, we could see the softness uh, as we were going into this uh, previous day. We had uh, NBI Red leading the daily still fractionally ahead. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's just not uh, much excitement. And then after the big rally, some fill back. And all we've done is come back to the ABM. Uh, ABM sitting at uh, 4657. Uh, just the too fast there and it was one of the weakest volume days I think we've seen in quite some time I mean, uh, it goes back to some of the uh, really slow action when we were on that slow uh, incline DLC wise uh, green still above uh, science but it's pretty flat that can flip pretty quickly now with orange rising uh, if orange continues to move up, we're going to signal uh, the potential of the crossover of the uh, steel there. That I would expect uh, short activation uh, back above zero with the cyan, and that should be a catalyst for uh, continued weakness. The fact that the shakeout is positive, if it rolls over here, um, you're going to have a significant pullback within that cell. Uh, the range for the market, uh, quote unquote, to get it together <laughs> is narrow. Uh, much stronger from a YM standpoint, which is the uh, Dow. But again, like where you see that rising orange uh, dip down here of the green and the continued rise of uh, the sign uh, would be enough to uh, uh, trigger some more uh, weakness within that uh, overall setup. And from an NQ standpoint, uh, red click will clear uh, lead uh, over uh, magenta and again that just poises more of that softness but you can see much closer to that uh, orange crossing over uh, steel and steel dips below cyan that would be double whammy you've already got partial rejection here within the nasdaq and it was much weaker because you can see it closed below the abm value so quite a bit of uh, shake up taking place within there it seems like a flight to quality where the dow is doing slightly better uh, gold not really producing much uh, once that uh, pivot came back down white being above that's uh, more softness for gold and of course like we mentioned the euro wasn't going anywhere uh, from that previous setup it was just a slight bounce it could still build um, it's an improvement from where it was in the deep uh, mood there but Certainly not a catalyst, and there's nothing in the uh, foreseeable future that is a bonus for uh, uh, anything to take place, particularly as we head towards uh, the current contract ending rolling over into the uh, March 22 contract. That's going to play uh, some significance to it. And uh, from an oil standpoint, um, still up there enough to where uh, you might really see much of an ease in the inflationary pressures. Uh, the interesting aspect of it is where um, Bitcoin and I had the huge deleveraging setup where uh, it was a half a million accounts were wiped out and liquidated on this dip that came here. The buyback pump wasn't enough to produce anything. We kept seeing white bleeding. Uh, so as soon as that uh, sell signal started, which was just above the 57,000 range, we just escalated and the return back to this was in a surprise because we had already suggested that that's where it was headed at the dip below the red line on the extreme. Um, this place in this particular area. And all we did was fill that back in place. Um, the potential for bounce back uh, built into there, but still very weak in the shakeout. Um, I think that um, it just shows the continuation of uh, these readings and where when the market suffers. Uh, there's a pretty decent drawdown um, from uh, asset wise. It doesn't take much to start driving this now. Down to 47. A breakdown here. Uh, there's plenty of positive extremes uh, that they uh, that still can take it uh, further, um, which just makes it tougher for anyone who started uh, midway into the year buying that uh, definitely underwater. Uh, from a ETH uh, reason, uh, or ETH. Was a sell pretty much well, all day. There was no change, there was nothing in here that was uh, remotely uh, able to capture. And it had been doing pretty well, getting kept pushing towards that 4500. But if it breaks the 4K number, uh, I would expect to continue to see a lot of uh, 
activity revenue in there, that would uh, be a danger sign as well. So from a 50k standpoint, um, weakness was pretty clean here once the MBI spiked above the jump there. And then by the next bar, it uh, already began uh, its cross uh, the yellow right there. And that was just a continuation and a spike of it. It just uh, further exacerbated that decline. And I would expect a move down towards the 50% category. Um, but this shows how pathetic the day was. I mean, this is the entire day. I mean, we see this in pre market uh, normal situation. And literally started at the beginning of the day uh, from a short standpoint, literally right at that uh, 4691 um, previous algo level. That left the 72 and a bunch of other ones as we go down below 64. There's like a series of them that were part of that original uh, spike. So there's just plenty of, I uh, mean, sort of filling in the ranges, but um, there's plenty of them that go down below. And again, um, even at the end of the day, as the little bounce back took place, red was over, it was just a free for that pivot. What I loved about today was with this MBI weight spike. And as we talked about, uh, when that takes place, the close of that bar um, after that pivot, we know price is going to revisit that level, so it becomes kind of an open range to just look for the first bit of weakness to be able to short that. And uh, that came right here a little early on, and uh, just depending on where we wanted to get it, whether it was more than 50% or uh, literally as it sort of coming back from uh, the peak move towards that close, a uh, great opportunity, and then it literally just sold off the rest of the day. That was a nice capture for all of that, so it was pretty clean. Easy, uh, slow as can be, uh, given the fact that there was just literally <laughs> no volume in that. Um, which is the same thing that we get on the upside when there's weak volume. I always warn that, hey, uh, you're subject to significant reversal. And likewise here with this, uh, also subject to the same. But uh, the question really is, is uh, some of the activity in the bond market, things like that, things could get uh, worse. So a lot of... Uh, where everyone thought they were safe, it was mostly a lot of short covering. And again, you don't have short covering uh, even from the bond standpoint yet. Um, boy, uh, things can turn around really quick. So, um, that big uh, turnaround up move, which is often what you see uh, in the short uh, turnaround reactions, um, particularly like we saw right here. Uh, if you're not able to hold that, people can be thinking, oh my, double top setup there. So, again, uh, we have the ABM, but then you have that 46.13 move down towards there or below it. Um, you know, you'll be looking for that 50% uh, interest. We didn't get any dip below the red line on that move, so it was pretty healthy, uh, popular for uh, institutional sets, but um, it kind of needed an additional driver, particularly where we are in the month. It's just not like the uh, move flow is going to go in there. Um, the Potential with uh, people moving towards safety versus equities, uh, even with the horrible yield, because it's a negative return on treasuries at this particular stage uh, when you look at inflation uh, versus what's being paid, and people are willing to take that negative carry uh, to reduce risk. So, ironically, um, you know, despite the headlines of all of you know, the major large players uh, selling out uh, here at the peaks uh, in big fashion, some of the popular tech things. So, Smart move on their part, just rotating out um, potentially into other investments and things like that uh, makes a lot of sense. So, um, we just continue to play the signals as they come. Um, and then right now it's still bullish but uh, weak from that standpoint. And I think that it's easy to kind of lose the ABM uh, yellow uh, above, definitely stay with the long side below. You have a lot more range to play with the uh, short activity expectation that uh, continuing to dip below there, you're going to see some pretty decent uh, moves. So uh, we could be for a fun holiday season, as they say. As always, though, I will continue to post anything wrong, trade well, we'll talk to you later.